It first looked like a hoax, the kind of rumor that circulates the Internet, generating buzz but ultimately fading into obscurity. But as more people began talking about it, the discussion grew louder, and soon it became a hotbed of debate. And, uh, as you heard earlier today, the FBI is investigating the alleged leak of classified documents and working closely with the Department of Defense and the intelligence community on this. Um, the investigation is in its first few days, so it's important to let that investigation run its course. Um, as it relates to the, the safety uh, or the safeguarding of sensitive information, that is, of course, something that we take uh, incredibly seriously here at the Department of Defense uh, and will continue to do so. But as it relates to this uh, particular allegation, uh, as I'm sure you can appreciate, uh, because it's under investigation, I'm just not going to be able to offer any more comment. Was it real? Could something so inflammatory, so consequential, truly have slipped into the public sphere? The authenticity of the leaked document became a central question, with skeptics quick to cast doubt and officials scrambling to offer partial confirmations. In a whirlwind of denials, half-truths, and carefully worded statements, it became clear that there was something to this leak, something unsettling. Those tasked with investigating the leak were in disarray. The content of the document wasn't just any mundane state information. It was something deeper, laden with truths that the U.S. would rather not have seen the light of day. It became an embarrassment for Washington, as the document painted the U.S. not as the beacon of justice it often claims to be, but as an empire of shifting morals, one that only remembers international rules when those rules serve its own interests or can be wielded against an adversary. And you said you had a follow-up. I have uh, one quick follow-up. There's obviously been uh, one Defense Department uh, employee who has been named on social media. Can you say whether or not that person or anyone else has had either their security clearance limited or anything as a result of this investigation so far? Um, yeah, again, as I, as I just highlighted, uh, this investigation is in its first few days, uh, and it's important to let the investigation run its course. Uh, to my knowledge, this official is not a subject of interest, uh, and the department remains fully committed to supporting the investigation, and I'll just leave it there. The hypocrisy was becoming harder to hide. At the end of this diplomatic theater, one thing became certain. The document was authentic. What had started as a possible hoax was now confirmed to be true, and the consequences of its contents were reverberating across the globe. The leaked document was not just real. It showed that the U.S. may have allegedly warned Iran about a looming nuclear Armageddon if Tehran responded too aggressively to an Israeli strike. This wasn't just any ordinary leak it pointed to a situation where a major conflict in the Middle East could escalate into something catastrophic. It became clear that the world was teetering on the edge of a new, volatile war. However, as the U.S. leak continued to dominate headlines and social media discussions, another critical leak went almost unnoticed. This time, it came from Iran, and while the global media was largely fixated on the American document, this Iranian leak revealed something just as important. A document recently in circulation in Iran appeared to contain alarming details about Iran's preparations for an Israeli strike. In a report translated by OMT News, it became apparent that Iran was not only expecting an Israeli attack, but was also preparing for a robust counterstrike. The document urged workers at Iran's nuclear facilities, oil refineries, petrochemical industries, government ministries, and military sites to brace for an Israeli assault. What's particularly striking about this Iranian document is the tone there's a palpable sense of panic, but also a steely determination to respond in kind. Iran isn't backing down. Instead, it is gearing up for a fight that could have unprecedented consequences for the region and beyond. We have sent our protest letter to the Secretariat and the Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency. This is a fundamental responsibility of the foreign ministry, and we will certainly pursue this matter further. Before we get deeper into the details of this sensitive information, 
let's take a closer look at the Israeli document itself, which now stands confirmed. The most shocking aspect of the leak is that it provides direct confirmation that Israel possesses nuclear weapons. For years, Israel has maintained a strategic ambiguity regarding its nuclear arsenal, neither confirming nor denying its existence, while accusing Iran of trying to build a nuclear weapon to destroy the Jewish state. But with this leak, that ambiguity has evaporated. The world now has undeniable proof. Israel has nuclear weapons, and it seems ready to use them if it deems necessary, possibly against Iran. This revelation has deep implications. For years, Iran may have suspected, but never definitively known, that Israel was armed with nuclear weapons. Now that suspicion is confirmed, and it will undoubtedly reshape Tehran's strategic calculus. Iran, which has long abided by a ban on procuring nuclear weapons citing Sharia law, might now rethink that stance. The idea of maintaining parity with Israel, a country armed to the teeth with nuclear weapons, could become an overwhelming rationale for Tehran to shift its policies. The enriched uranium Iran already possesses could be weaponized within weeks, if not days. This leak could very well trigger a nuclear arms race in the Middle East. The timing of this leak is also significant. Israel's threat to strike Iran's nuclear facilities is no secret. And now, with this confirmation of its nuclear arsenal, Tehran might feel more pressure than ever to develop a nuclear deterrent. I'm thinking back a year uh, to remember that one of the reasons why Hamas, uh, it's thought, um, staged that horrible attack into Israel 12 months ago was because Israel and Saudi Arabia were probably a week or two away from signing a peace agreement. Uh, and of course, that suits no one's interests uh, in, in Iran. It suits none of the extremist terrorist organisations that Iran funds and trains. But frankly, most of the, um, c certainly the Sunni Arab countries, that, that is to say um, uh, Saudi Arabia, Israel, uh, sorry, Egypt and Jordan, uh, many of the Gulf states, you know, th they would rather see Israel um, damage Iran's nuclear weapons ambitions. Absolutely. What happens if Iran decides to accelerate its nuclear program? Absolutely. Western analysts warn that a nuclear exchange could become inevitable in such a scenario, plunging the entire region into a devastating conflict. Some experts even argue that Israel sees this as its only opportunity to act to strike before Iran reaches the point of no return with its nuclear capabilities. The leaked Israeli document also raises a troubling question. Will Israel's preemptive strike successfully cripple Iran's nuclear program? If they attack Israel, you know, the Israelis could take the advantage. The Israelis are in such euphoria, they can even attack the nuclear react the nuclear facilities of, of, of Iran. The Israelis for sure, if Iran attack, will hit the uh, oil refineries. We have to be very careful of having a, a, an impact on world economy. Therefore, you know, there is a lot of anxiety, you know, that it will become a regional war because it's going to impact our economies, among other things. Uh, it's clear that Israel views this Iran as a critical reality. moment perhaps the last chance to destroy Iran's nuclear capabilities before it's too late. For years, Israel has advocated for a tough stance on Iran, fearing that a nuclear-armed Tehran would not only threaten its security, but also destabilize the entire Middle East. But the stakes are now even higher. Israel might believe that if it doesn't act now, it might never get another chance to prevent a nuclear-armed Iran. In Tehran, however, this leak could be seen as further justification to push forward with a nuclear weapons program. Iran's leadership might argue that the threat of an Israeli nuclear strike leaves them with no choice but to develop their own arsenal to ensure mutual destruction is assured, a dangerous but often stabilizing force in nuclear politics. It is a chilling reality that as both sides prepare for conflict, the world might be sleepwalking into one of the most dangerous confrontations the Middle East has ever seen. Will Israel strike first? 
hoping to disable Iran's capabilities. Will Iran retaliate with such force that it escalates into a full-blown nuclear exchange? As these leaked documents continue to swirl through the internet and media, one thing is certain. The countdown to war has already begun. Insert. Looking at the leak from a more critical perspective, one might speculate that Israel may have wanted to send a clear message to Iran, signaling that it has secret missiles ready to counter any planned retaliation if Iran strikes its key targets. Among the most significant revelations were the names of two secret weapons, Rock and Golden Horizon, both air-launched ballistic missile ABLM systems. These appeared in the two leaked documents, pointing to Israel's sophisticated missile capabilities. The Rock missile system is a long-range weapon developed by the Israeli company Rafael, specifically designed to target a wide variety of assets, both above ground and deep beneath the surface. This makes it an incredibly versatile tool in Israel's military arsenal, capable of hitting critical infrastructure or underground facilities with precision. On the other hand, Golden Horizon is believed to be the Blue Sparrow missile system, which has an impressive range of approximately 2,000 kilometers, around 1,240 miles. The mention of these missile systems suggests that Israel might be preparing for an expanded and more strategic version of its previous ABLM attack on an Iranian radar site near Isfahan back in April. What's fascinating about this is how these weapons would allow Israel to launch long-range strikes from well outside Iran's borders. This would give the Israeli Air Force a significant advantage by enabling it to avoid overflying certain neighboring countries like Jordan, which could otherwise create diplomatic complications. It seems Israel is keen on maintaining the element of surprise while minimizing the risk of dragging other regional players into the conflict. Notably, the leaked documents did not indicate any preparations by Israel to activate its nuclear deterrent, which raises some interesting questions about the country's overall strategy. The U.S. government, at Israel's request, has always maintained a veil of secrecy regarding Israel's nuclear capabilities. Officially, Washington never acknowledges that Israel possesses nuclear weapons, which has led to considerable embarrassment in the wake of this leak. It's no secret that the U.S. and Israel have a history of engaging in geopolitical maneuvering, often shrouded in secrecy and misdirection. This has led some to speculate that the leak might have been a staged operation designed to send specific signals to both Iran and the broader international community. The U.S. maximum pressure campaign against Iran is working on a tactical level. Uh, Iran has less money, for example, to send to various proxies of supporting in the region. However, there's a twist in this narrative. Investigations have increasingly pointed to a Pentagon official as the source of the leak leading many to reconsider whether this was a staged event at all. Instead, it's possible that the leak was the result of a covert operation, with Iranian intelligence collaborating with an American security official who was eager to avoid the outbreak of a potential World War III in the Middle East. Recent, albeit unconfirmed, reports have identified Ariana Tabatabai as the individual allegedly responsible for leaking the documents. This adds another layer of intrigue, given her background and connections. Uriana Tabatabai is a prominent Iranian-American scholar, a senior policy advisor to the United States Department of Defense, and a figure with an impressive academic and professional resume. She is a graduate of King's College London and the daughter of Javad Tabatabai, a well-known Iranian philosopher and professor at the University of Tehran. Over the years, Ariana has held various roles, including as a former researcher at the RAND Corporation Think Tank, Curriculum Director, and Associate Professor of Security Studies at Georgetown University, and an international civilian consultant for NATO. She has also been affiliated with other prestigious research institutions, such as the German Marshall Fund of the United States. Her credentials are impeccable, which only adds to the intrigue surrounding her alleged involvement in the leak. 
In 2020, before the U.S. presidential election, Tabatabai published an article in Foreign Policy magazine where she argued that Iran's fragile economy would force it to negotiate and make concessions. She urged that whichever candidate won the presidency should not return to the original nuclear agreement but should push for a deal with stricter conditions. Following the inauguration of the Biden administration in January 2021, Tabatabai joined the U.S. negotiating team during the nuclear talks with Iran. However, her tenure on the team was short-lived. Alongside Richard Nephew, another key negotiator, she left the team due to disagreements with Robert Malley, the head of the U.S. negotiating team. One of her primary concerns was that the Biden administration was planning to lift too many sanctions on Iran, which she believed would weaken the potential deal. Tabatabai's departure from the negotiating team did little to quiet the controversy that surrounds her. In September 2023, reports surfaced linking her to the Iran Experts Initiative a covert effort by senior officials in Tehran to shape global security discourse in Iran's favor. Semaphore and Iran International were the first outlets to break this story, claiming that a large cache of Iranian government correspondence and emails directly connected her to the initiative. This revelation led to calls for a review of her security clearance, spearheaded by Senator Marsha Blackburn. Yet in October 2023, after an internal review, Tabatabai retained her top-secret security clearance. This decision was confirmed in a letter from Rian E. Verkula, an Assistant Secretary of Defense, to Senator Joni Ernst on October 13th. The Pentagon has since come to Tabatabai's defense, releasing a statement that emphasized the thoroughness of her vetting process and reaffirming her value to the Department of Defense. Despite the swirling controversy, the department stands by her, asserting that she continues to serve honorably. This has not stopped the speculation surrounding her alleged involvement in the leak, though, especially given her deep ties to both U.S. policy circles and Iran. All of this raises some compelling questions about what truly happened behind the scenes. Was this leak a deliberate effort by someone inside the Pentagon to prevent further escalation in the Middle East, or was it an intelligence coup by the Iranians who managed to exploit divisions within the U.S. government? Whatever the case, this incident shines a spotlight on the complex and often opaque world of international diplomacy and intelligence, where the lines between friend and foe can blur in surprising ways.